I get asked a lot of questions on social media through both comments and direct messages. And as you can imagine, a lot of them are the same. So I decided to make a longer YouTube video today, just tackling some of my most asked questions. So hopefully no one ever has to ask me these again. So let's get into it. First up is how did I get my start in motorsport videography? I get asked this so much that I actually made a playlist called how to get my job and I just refer people to that. But I'll give you the short version here. I started watching racing uh, with my dad's side of the family in my teens and I would watch Formula One with my uncle and I got pretty into it but never really had an interest in racing myself but I loved watching it. And I also had a huge interest in filmmaking and videography. I took film classes in high school and I ended up studying television broadcasting in college. After graduating, I worked like a bunch of odd jobs. I worked as a commercial painter. I worked at a couple of gyms. I worked at a city facility, all kinds of different stuff. But I ended up working as a video editor and occasional videographer with the Canadian Football League in downtown Toronto. After a couple seasons there, I got a job with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, which is one of the teams. It was during that time that I got really back into my I love of filmmaking and videography and I started just bringing my camera to car races I would go to as a fan and just make little films and do some shooting and eventually I started asking for media credentials and I got so many rejections as you can imagine because I didn't really have a reason to be there. Eventually I got in a couple of times uh, just you know saying that hey I just want to come and get some experience I'll gladly share the footage with you and I got in a couple of times and got some really great experience from that. Once I was at the track with those credentials I used that time to like network and meet people and I eventually got hooked up with AIM Autosport which was a race team in Woodbridge Ontario and after doing the 2019 Rolex 24 for them at Daytona, completely free of charge, just to show them my skill set. They ended up hiring me for the full season, and from then on, I've been a professional motorsport filmmaker working uh, as a freelancer. I worked with AIM for a couple years, and now I have my whole own roster of clients that I work with. So I will take a moment just to thank Ian and Keith Willis and Andrew Bourdine from AIM Autosport because they really gave me my first role as you know a motorsport content creator and now it's what I do for a living, which is incredible. So that wasn't really a short version, but that's basically the story on how I got to become a motorsport filmmaker. The second question I get so much and it's, Mark, how do I get media passes or media credentials to a race? People always wanna know how to get credentials for races and most of the people that are asking me about credentials have no business getting a media credential and they just wanna get cool stuff for their Instagram. But the good thing is, you don't need media credentials to get great photos or video. You just buy a ticket and take your camera. If you look at IMSA in the US, for example, they allow fans to walk through the paddock on a regular general admission ticket. Any fan can go in the paddock, they can go out trackside in the fan area, so many different locations. And a lot of the times when we're trackside shooting, as much as we're allowed in those restricted areas, we're standing right next to fans in the spectator area because the shooting there is even better. And IMSA is also just one of the most affordable pro racing series to go see in person. But if your heart is set on getting credentials, there's basically two main ways. And one is that you're working for somebody in the paddock. You're working for teams, drivers, manufacturers, whatever it is, and they get you credentialed you know, on your behalf. They say to the series or the track, we need this person here, they're working with us, they do our media, so we need to get them credentialed. And you get in that way. The other way is through traditional media, whether it be like a website or a blog and you know, racing news, whatever it is you get credentialed through them as part of their coverage team. And that is actually a great way to get your first few credentials. You can offer your services to one of these smaller fan run publications even. You'll probably have to work for free, but it can get your foot in the door the first few times and you can start networking with people in the paddock. There are of course other ways to obtain credentials, but those are the two most common. But again, you do not need media credentials to get great photos and video at motorsport events. Next up is how do you get clients? This is very simple. You network a lot and you're very outgoing. You need to be able to talk to people. You need to be likable and personable. You can be the best videographer in the world, but if people don't like having you around, they're not gonna hire you. It's as simple as the fact that people want to hire people they like. They wanna hire their friends. Look at the business world. People are constantly using their friends' companies for contracts. Look at politicians. They're constantly using their friends' companies. 
but this is true in motorsport as well. People wanna help their friends out. I do the same as well. I have friends who are videographers and when I need work, I usually call them first because I can trust them and we have that personal connection. Now, does this put newcomers at a disadvantage? Of course, it can be very tough to break in. My advice is to start going to lower levels of racing, grassroots events, track days, and just start introducing yourself to people. You need to start at the bottom. So many people ask me, well, I wanna get into Formula One, like I wanna shoot NASCAR, I wanna shoot these top level series. Well, that's like going into a hospital on day one of med school and expecting to do a brain surgery. That's just not going to happen. You wanna be in these smaller paddocks, making connections face to face with people. If you hang around long enough, people will get to know you and they'll get to know your work. Start climbing the ladder that way. After a while, you won't really need to market yourself. People will know you're around. If they need a photographer or a videographer, they'll say, well, why don't we get that person? I've seen their work, it's pretty good, and they're usually always here. And that can turn into some consistent work for you. The other thing is that motorsport is such a small world. We joke that pretty much everyone knows everyone. So as you go and make connections, those connections will turn into more connections and they'll tell two friends and they'll tell two friends and so on. If you're personable, people like hanging out with you, you provide great value for money and you do good work, you're well on your way. Next up is what camera should I buy? And then bonus, what camera do you use? So I don't like to talk about cameras in depth or give camera suggestions to people for a couple of reasons. First off, this is gonna sound super arrogant, I'm not sponsored by any camera companies. And there are people with a lot smaller social following than I have that are sponsored. Now, I don't go to the extreme of taping over the logos on my cameras and purposely not saying what companies I use. I just don't go out of my way to promote them. I'm definitely not going to my social media and adding, you know, Canon user, Sony user to my bio. I've never really understood why people do that. Secondly, a camera is a huge purchase for a lot of people, especially if you're a hobbyist and you don't make any money off your filmmaking or photography. And I'm not a gearhead. I don't know what all the different cameras do, and I don't wanna steer you in the wrong direction. I don't stay up late at night reading camera specs. I don't get excited about the next you know, group of cameras that's coming out. I just have cameras, I know what the buttons do, I understand the exposure triangle and how to frame a shot, and I make films. That's just what I do. Camera gear is cool, and I know there's lots of gearheads out there that love their gear, they're great filmmakers, and they're always chatting about specs and whatnot, and that's fantastic. I'm just not one of those people. But that being said, I do wholeheartedly believe that there are far too many people, especially at the amateur level, who put way too much stock in their camera equipment. They always think they're just the next camera away from being great at what they do. And the thing is, if you're shooting on a much you know, cheaper, you know, beginner mirrorless or DSLR camera and your photos aren't very good, it's likely not because of the camera. You just need to practice your skills more and learn everything that that camera can do. You know, even at the professional level now, I see people on an almost weekly basis that we joke about having all the gear and no idea. People that always have the fanciest new equipment, but their films are not nearly as good as they could be if they spent more time just working on storytelling and composition. You can have the best and most expensive and high quality camera in the world sitting in front of you, but if you don't know how to use that camera, you don't know composition, lighting, and the basics of storytelling, you're not gonna go very far. The next question I absolutely love answering, and it's do you have to go to school for your job? And I think that's a really interesting question because a lot of people are being pushed into going to college now, and we require degrees for jobs that didn't require a degree even just 10 or 15 years ago. But for what I do as a videographer, no, you really don't need to go to school. I mentioned earlier that I did go to school and I did learn some of the basics of filmmaking and different techniques, but a lot of what I learned, I learned on my own by you know going to YouTube University late at night back in the day when the longest YouTube video you could upload was 10 minutes. And also shout out to people who put tutorials on YouTube because you got me through some dark times late at nights when projects were due at 8 a.m. the next day. But the majority of what I learned, I learned just by going out with my camera and making fun movies, making videos, and you know most importantly, failing a lot. I learned so much by not succeeding and what I could have done better. You can definitely go to college if you want for filmmaking or broadcast or whatever it is. I know lots of people that are successful in the industry that both did and didn't go to post-secondary education. 
The one thing I will say that as like a content creator and like solo filmmaker, I've never had a client ask me where I went to school or if they could see a degree. So the final question I'm gonna to cover today is, do you film Formula One? So I have a joke with my colleagues about this one that like back before the Netflix show and before everyone at your office watched Formula One, when I would mention that I, you know, filmed car racing, people would say, oh, so like you film NASCAR? But now they say, oh, so you film Formula One? I don't film Formula One. In full disclosure, first off, I've never been offered a gig in Formula One. So I've never had an opportunity to film F1 as of the recording of this video. But also, unfortunately, Formula One's TV rights deals don't allow for the filming of any on-track activities. I ran into the same issue when I was in Australia last year shooting the Adelaide 500 supercars race. They have the same rules. You can't film anything on track. I actually wrote about it in an article for Speed Cafe, which I'll put in the description below. Now, before you bombard the comments, or please do bombard the comments because it helps the algorithm, uh, yeah, you can sit in the stands and film with your phone or walk around the grounds and film with your phone and no one's going to bother you. But as credentialed media, you are not allowed to film any on-track activities at a Formula One race. So that would include, you know, the practices, the race, you can't even shoot pit stops or anything like that. Basically, you're limited to what you see in like the McLaren on box series, behind the scenes stuff, in the paddock, in the team hospitality, maybe the Thursday pit stop practice that's not on TV or the track walk, things like that. Now, due to these filming rules, unless you're like embedded with a team the way like Jimmy is at Aston Martin, making really cool behind the scenes content, I will, as an aside, just say, I don't know Jimmy. I just know he's the Aston Martin videographer and he makes incredible content within that small box of stuff you are allowed to film. So kudos to him and his social media is linked in the description below. And next time you see an awesome video on the Aston Martin social media, comment and let them know that, you know, Jimmy did a great job. Because as creatives, we really appreciate that. Okay, tangent over. But as I said before, there's just not a lot of video gigs to go around because of these filming rules. Now it's the complete opposite in sports cars, for example, where you're allowed to shoot on track and pit stops. It might come with a licensing fee, like the series might charge the client or yourself a fee to be allowed to film. But once you pay that fee, you're able to shoot everything on track and you can work for drivers, teams, sponsors, brands, auto manufacturers, all those different things. So there's so much work to go around. For example, at the 24 Hours of Le Mans this year, there were four video crews all filming this same car, all for different companies that were involved in that entry. So those are some of the questions that I get asked the most. I will definitely do a part two at some point. So if you have any more questions that you'd like to have answered, please put them in the comments down below. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I thank you. Uh, please subscribe, hit the like button, all of those things that people on YouTube tell you to do. It does go a long way. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna be trying to post on YouTube a bit more frequently. It's been tough just with my travel schedule, especially over the next nine weeks. It's gonna be insane, but I'll try to get some longer form content out to you folks because I keep having more and more requests for it. But again, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.